All right, so today we're diving into something uh, pretty wild. Okay. We're talking about running a massive AI model. Okay. Locally on your computer yeah. without a GPU. Wow. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but it's actually possible. Mm -hmm. The model is called DeepSeek R1671B. Oh, okay. And we found out about it from a Reddit user, uh, Void Alchemy. All right. They posted about it on the R Local Ama subreddit. Okay. And this could be a glimpse into the future of AI. How so? Where these powerful tools aren't just for, yeah. you know, big yeah. companies or research labs. Exactly. This could be something yeah. that anyone can do at home. So these large language models, yep. like this DeepSeek model, oh, yeah. they typically need a yeah. ton of processing power, yeah. usually a dedicated GPU. Right. But this example yeah. really challenges that assumption. Okay, I have to admit, I'm a little skeptical. Oh, yeah. I mean, how could a regular computer right. handle something this complex? Uh. It's designed to process language, generate text. Mm -hmm. Basically, think like oh, a yeah. you know a super brain. It's like yeah. trying to yeah. run a marathon on a treadmill. Uh huh. That's a good analogy. Right. But the key here yeah. is that they use some clever techniques. Okay. To make it work. Like, One of them is memory mapping. Memory mapping. Yeah. All right. Break that down for me. It's so like I have... need the yeah E L I five version here. Okay. So imagine you have this giant cookbook. Okay. Thousands of pages. Right. Memory mapping is like only yeah. opening the page mm -hmm. with the specific recipe you need. Okay. Instead of trying to hold the entire cookbook open, right. you're only accessing yeah. the essential parts. Okay. And that saves a lot of memory. So instead of loading this entire massive AI model right. into the computer's memory. Exactly. It's more like streaming it. Yeah. It, yeah. As needed. Exactly. Mm. And the other crucial piece is dynamic quantization. Dynamic quantization. Yeah, it focuses on the calculations okay. the model needs to make. I'm already feeling a little lost. Uh huh. No worries. It's a. In the technical weeds here. It's a pretty complex concept. Yeah. Um, let's try this analogy. Okay. Imagine you're streaming a video on your phone. Right. Sometimes, if your connection is slow, yeah. the video quality drops a bit right. so it can keep playing smoothly. Mm -hmm. Dynamic quantization is kind of like that. Okay. It adjusts the precision of the calculations. Mm on the fly, okay. making them faster and less demanding right. on your CPU, Yeah, even if it sacrifices a tiny bit of accuracy. Less memory usage, right? faster calculations, yeah. and suddenly we're in a world where mm -hmm. running a huge AI model yeah. on a regular PC yeah. doesn't seem completely bonkers. Exactly. But how does this actually play out right. in the real world? Well, what kind of performance are we talking about? The Reddit user reported yeah. running the model at over two tokens per second. Okay. Which, while not as fast as a yeah. dedicated GPU setup, is right. still pretty impressive. Okay, color me intrigued, uh -huh. but let's talk about why this matters. Okay. Why should someone listening to this yeah. even care about running right. a massive AI model on their computer? It's the key question, isn't it? Yeah. For you, this could be about accessibility. Yeah. What if you could experiment with mm. advanced AI, Yeah. create your own tools, mm. or even just play around uh. with this cutting edge technology, right. all without needing a pricey GPU? That's a pretty compelling thought. Yeah. No more being limited right. by expensive hardware. Exactly. But what about the practicalities? I, what kind of investment are we actually talking about? So the Reddit user suggested yeah. that around $1,500 Okay. Invested in high-end SSDs All right. could get you there. Still an investment, sure, right. but significantly less yeah. than the cost of a top-of-the-line GPU. So potentially a big win exactly. for anyone on a budget. Yep. But beyond the cost, yeah. what about things like energy consumption? Right. Those GPUs are notorious. Yeah, they're power hungry. For being power hungry beasts. Yeah. Right. That's another interesting aspect. Yeah. The user mentioned their system ran cool, hmm. even without the GPU's fans spinning. Interesting. So this suggests lower power consumption, okay. which okay. is good for your electricity bill right. and the environment. All right, so we've got potential cost savings, mm -hmm. smaller environmental footprint, yeah, and the possibility of running powerful AI locally. Right. This is starting to sound like a pretty big deal. Yeah. It is. Well, where does it go from here? Okay. What are the bigger implications of all this? Well, think about the potential for smaller devices, okay. offline applications, mm -hmm. and even a broader community of AI users and innovators. Right. This could change the way we think about 
Yeah. Integrating AI into our lives. It feels like we're cracking open a door. It does. To a whole new world of AI possibility. It really does. But before we get too carried away, yeah. I think it's important to understand okay. exactly how this magic trick works. Right. How do memory mapping yeah. and dynamic quantization mm -hmm. actually function on a technical level? That's a great point, and that's exactly what we'll dig into next. Okay. Let's peel back the layers and see All right. how this technology is pushing the boundaries yeah. of what's possible. I'm excited. Me too. Okay. So we've established that running this massive AI right. locally without a GPU yeah. is actually possible. Yeah. Uh, thanks to memory mapping yeah. and dynamic quantization. Right. But how do those actually work? Hmm. Let's start with memory mapping, since that's really the foundation of this whole approach. All right. Imagine you're working on a huge project. Okay. Like writing a book. Yeah. And you've got tons of research notes mm. spread out all over your desk. Okay. It's overwhelming, right? Definitely. Memory mapping is like having a system. Yeah. Where you only bring the specific notes you need. Right. For the chapter you're currently writing uh, I... to your desk, mm. instead of having everything piled up at once. Right. So instead of loading the entire AI model. Exactly. It's only pulling in the pieces it needs right. at any given moment. Yeah. Like a super efficient filing system. Precisely. For your AI. And this is where the high speed SSD comes in. Okay. It acts like a super fast assistant. Yeah. Fetching those specific pieces right. of the AI model from storage, mm -hmm. bringing them to the forefront when needed. So the SSD is like the key. Yeah. It plays a crucial role, for sure. To this whole operation. Now let's add dynamic quantization to the mix. Okay. Remember how we talked about screaming a video yes. on your phone? Mm -hmm. And the quality adjusting. Right. Based on your connection speed. Yeah, I've definitely experienced my fair <laughs> share of blurry videos. Exactly. When my internet's acting up. Well, think of dynamic quantization as the AI equivalent I, of that. Right. It's constantly yeah. analyzing the calculations yeah. the model needs to perform okay. and adjusting the precision on the fly. So if a calculation doesn't need to be right. super precise, exactly. it rounds it off a bit. Yeah, like compressing a file to make it smaller. To make it faster. Exactly. So it's like finding that sweet spot yeah. between accuracy and speed. Right. Making sure the AI runs smoothly mm -hmm. without sacrificing too much precision. And the dynamic part means it's happening constantly. Okay. Adapting to the specific needs of the model. So I'm starting to see yeah. how these two techniques work together. Mm -hmm. Memory mapping keeps the memory usage in check. Right. Dynamic quantization speeds up the calculations. It's a tag team for efficient AI processing. Yeah. And the beauty of this approach is yeah. it doesn't require any modifications okay. to the AI model itself. It's interesting. It's all about optimizing the way it runs. Okay, so let's bring this back to you. Okay. We've talked about the technical details. Yeah. But what are the real world implications? Right. How could this impact your life? Hmm. Well, imagine if you could create yeah. your own AI-powered tools mm -hmm. without needing access to a massive data center right. or expensive hardware. Yeah. Think about the possibilities in your field. That's a really exciting thought. It is. Like the power of AI is yeah. suddenly within reach mm -hmm. for anyone with a decent computer. Exactly. But let's talk about some specific examples. Okay. You mentioned offline applications earlier. Right. What does that look like in practice? Imagine an AI-powered language translator. Okay. That works even when you don't have internet access. Okay. Or a medical diagnosis tool mm. that can be used in remote areas. Right. With limited connectivity. Many possibilities. The possibilities are pretty vast. Yeah. Yeah. And on the flip side, what about areas where okay. this approach might not be suitable? Here. What are the limitations? No, as we mentioned before, yeah. performance is still a key factor right. for applications that demand yep. lightning fast processing, mm. like real time video editing or gaming. Okay. A dedicated GPU right. yeah. is still going to be the better option. So it's all about understanding the trade offs. Exactly. And choosing the right tool for yeah. the job. Right. But even with those limitations, yeah. this breakthrough feels significant. It does. It's like we're witnessing a shift mm -hmm. in the AI landscape. It's definitely a step yeah. towards making AI more accessible, mm. democratizing access right. to these powerful tools. Yeah, and who knows what other innovations exactly. might emerge sure. as a result. It's like a ripple effect with each breakthrough leading to yeah. new possibilities. Speaking of possibilities. Okay. What does the future hold for this approach right. to running AI? Mm. 
what are the next frontiers? That's a great question. Yeah. And one that we'll explore in our next segment. Okay. Let's dive into the potential right. for further optimization, mm -hmm. new hardware development. Okay. And the broader implications of yeah. this shift in the AI ecosystem. Sounds good. We've been talking about this amazing breakthrough yeah. of running massive AI models locally right. without needing a GPU. It's pretty incredible. But where does it go from here? Well, that's the exciting part. Yeah. We've seen this initial breakthrough. Right. But it feels like just the beginning. Okay, so paint me a picture of that future. Well, imagine yeah. software specifically designed to mm. harness the power okay. of memory mapping yeah. and dynamic quantization. So not just relying on the hardware right. to get faster, yeah. but making the software smarter. Exactly. About how it uses those resources. And what about the hardware? Yeah, what about the hardware side? What if we see SSDs designed specifically okay. for AI workloads? Interesting. SSDs with even faster read and write speeds. Oh. Maybe even new types of memory oh. that blur the lines between RAM and storage. So the hardware is evolving. Right alongside the software. To keep pace with these innovative software approaches. Exactly. This makes me think about research and development. Yeah. Could this lead to a world where mm -hmm. Anyone can experiment with AI. It's a real possibility. Not just big institutions right. with deep pockets. Imagine students, yeah. independent researchers, mm -hmm. even small businesses, right. having the power to tinker with yeah. and develop cutting edge AI models. It's like the democratization of AI. Exactly. Breaking down those barriers to entry mm -hmm. and opening up a whole new world of possibility. And that's what's so exciting about this whole thing. Let's bring this back to you. Okay. How could this impact your life? You know, it's all about thinking about yeah. the tools and applications you use every day. Mm -hmm. Could they be enhanced okay. or even revolutionized by AI? Interesting. What if you could personalize those tools? Yeah. Make them smarter, yeah. more efficient, more intuitive. The potential is pretty much limitless. Right. And that's what I find so exciting about this whole conversation. Yeah, me too. It's not just about the technology itself. Mm -hmm. It's about the doors it opens. Right. The creativity it unlocks. It's a reminder that innovation can come from anywhere. Yeah. From a Reddit user experimenting in their spare time right. to a team of researchers mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. what's the one key takeaway you want our listener to walk away with? Hmm. I think it's this. Okay. The world of AI is evolving rapidly mm -hmm. and it's becoming more accessible every day. So don't be afraid to explore, to experiment, to ask questions. I love it. Who knows? You might just stumble upon yeah. the next big breakthrough. On that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive. It's been a pleasure. Into the world of running a massive AI model locally. Yeah, it has. Without a GPU. Thanks for having me. And to our listener. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Until next time. We hope you learned something new. Yeah. Gained a fresh perspective. Keep exploring. And maybe even sparked a bit of your own curiosity. Right. About the future of AI. Absolutely. Until next time, keep exploring. Yeah. And keep diving deep. We'll see you then.